Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about methods of measuring body composition and body fat percentage. And while you will never precisely know exactly what your level of body fat is. So there are a lot of methods for measuring body composition. We have skin fold calipers, very cheap, relatively non-invasive. We have bioelectrical impedance, very non-invasive. You just hold on to some electrodes or stand on. Um, we have more expensive and more um, advanced techniques such as bod pod, DEXA scan, underwater weighing, etc. So all of these have a degree of accuracy. Um, let's say margins of error. I'm not specifically going to go into the ins and outs of each one because this video would be really, really long. But I can make subsequent videos on each one specifically if you'd like, just ask for it. So, why will you never accurately know what your body fat percentage is? So, what I've done is drawn a table. I'll hold this up for a while because um, it allows you to take it all in. So, the table that you see on the left, what we've done is broken you down into two compartments. This is the two compartment model. What this is, is fat and fat free mass. So for example, if you're doing skin fold calipers, you're identifying um, fat mass or subcutaneous fat, and then there's everything else. If you're doing, um, let's say, bioelectrical impedance, you would have fat you'd have um, fat-free mass and it would also have a percentage of water. So the issue with this is that fat-free mass is all-encompassing. Everything except fat goes within this section. So that means muscle tissue, obviously, but it also means bone, hair, water, um, organs, it's essentially everything else. So there's a massive margin of error and there are a lot of assumptions that are being made on the percentages within fat-free mass, i.e. protein percentages, water percentages, mineral count percentages, etc. Then what we have is a three compartment model. The DEXA scan fits in here. So what this does is it breaks down fat-free mass into two sections. What it has is fat-free mass and then it has mineral content, i.e. bone. The issue with this is that everything within fat-free mass still applies. There are still assumptions being made um, within the allowance of fat-free mass. So a DEXA scan is not precisely accurate. There are still potentially large margins of error in terms of DEXA scan. Now, then what we have is what we consider the king of what we can use at the moment. This is the four compartment model. What this does is uses um, more techniques which you then cross-reference. So you would have something like body density measured with underwater weighing. You would have fluid measured by a technique called deuterium dilution techniques. And you do something like a DEXA scan to have um, bone mineral, i.e. Um, uh, bone content. So this is the top one that we can use at the moment. Very, very expensive, only something that some researchers will be able to use. Um, there is also a six compartment model where you can break down into intracellular, extracellular fluids, uh, glycogen and glucose, etc. to break it down even more so. But for the moment, let's talk about the four compartment as the king of what we can use at the moment. So, what is the issue? Now, the big issue with this is that the things that affect the allowances within fat-free mass are dependent on age, gender, race, diet, nutrition, and genetic factors. Some methods of body composition analysis will be okay for tracking trends, i.e. if you're losing fat, they will be able to track that, although the actual accuracy of their body fat percentage might have a larger margin of error. Some techniques for measuring body fat percentage um, have such a wild degree of accuracy that if you track your changes over three months of a dieting prep, the margin of error is so big that you could lose fat and it may even say that you have lost none because the margin of error is so large that it could discount a good couple of months of progress for most people. So, if you really 
want to know exactly how much muscle tissue you have, exactly how much fat you have, there is something called carcass analysis. Carcass analysis means you're dead, you get chopped up, and everything gets weighed. This is the exact way of doing it. Now, this video is not meant to discourage people from using techniques. This is an introduction to potentially a larger video series where I'll explain the pros and cons of each one. So, body fat analysis techniques can still be used. There are still um, populations where they might work better for, i.e. if we're tracking one person's progress, you might use one technique over another. Or if you're trying to track a lot of people in a research study, then you may use a different technique. So there are pros and cons of each. I'm not saying that you don't use them. What I'm saying is that when one of them tells you exactly what your body fat percentage is, it has a margin of error. Even underwater weighing and even DEXA scans will have a margin of error. So there is no way to precisely know exactly how much fat you have and exactly how much muscle tissue you have. You will be able to predict it within a margin of error, but not with 100% certainty. So that's it. Quick video to explain the um, differences between the two, three, four, and even six compartment models. Um, feel free to ask questions. If you want uh, me to do a specific video on each one, i.e. biological impedance, um, skin fold calipers, DEXA scans, etc., feel free to ask. So this will be the first video of potentially a larger series. So I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to post comments or questions on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training, or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.